Today we're going to audit one of Australia's largest camping stores, BCF, which stands for Boating, Camping, Fishing. We will cover things like the UX, the UI, the design, the call to actions, the performance, its SEO, how it ranks, uh, what it ranks for, um, and, and what it could possibly do to make some easy improvements and upfront suggestions to um, grab some either a higher conversion rate or improve their rankings in SEO. If you haven't seen one of our audits yet, go have a look at our video. I'll link one in the description. Our previous one we did came up. It's a giant store here in Australia. Uh, as always, please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment. I'll single-handedly reply to each and every single video. Um, we'll jump right in. This is their, their main site. This is their homepage. Uh, it's secure, which is a, a great thing being a store. It's actually a really nice looking website. It's they have, you know, yeah, probably a hundred stores in Australia, one in every you know, big suburb here. So they handle a lot of brick and mortar type sales, and I'm not sure how much of their online is part of their revenue. So to start off, their UI is pretty good. Their whole navigation is fairly intuitive. It seems to display what you would expect it to display. There is sort of this lag time though from hovering an item to being shown this navigation. And I'm not sure if that's exactly what they're going for. It does seem to be react like responsive in terms of what we're trying to do. I'd be more in favor of not having that delay and just showing me what I want to see straight away. In terms of their sales, their little hook, that's pretty cool. Their little shopping cart stuff. I wouldn't put the shopping cart so far away from here. It's something that people actively look for if there's anything in their cart. And we'll put something in our cart to see what happens there. But that should really be a bigger call to action. Having a localized store, it has identified my area and automatically applied a store to me, which is awesome. That's fantastic. That's something we noticed with Kmart that they didn't do. It was sort of the generic loading. So it's loaded up where I am and it's given me my local store hours and and so forth, which is awesome. And their store page seems to be pretty intuitive. Their little icons and stuff are quite nice, especially being themed to the color. There does seem to be a mismatch in color though. I'm not sure if you can see it. This color, so this color, no, nope. this color is not the same color as this color. So this is the color from that bar, and then this is the color to this bar. These so there's sort of a line here and a line here based on their grid system that I can easily see a color difference which isn't very nice to look at however it is very very minimal scrolling down their main slider seems to be really nice however common trends say that these don't really get used if they don't auto slide then it they're not going to get used so i have noticed they use heat mapping they're probably going to be thinking it's working now because i've used it however it's not something that's commonly used scrolling down clear products Scrolls nicely. Seems to be nice. Their sliders are really nice to use. They're responsive. Uh, cool banners. Nice call to actions. I'm not sure how I like the hard effect where there's no transition into the items or the hover items. It's just a hard transition. I'd, I'd probably like a smooth fade animation or some sort of animation however pretty nice design their footer their custom icons are all themed to their color this cool little icon of their, one of their buildings their recalls are all the footer that's fine um their fonts are fine it's easy to see easy to read i did notice though with their icons there are individually sort of i mean added so this is one SVG, and it is SVG, that is an added advantage that they do have. However, it 
should be really an icon font. So if you're dealing with SVGs, you may as well create an icon font. And there's Fontello, uh, Fontello, fantastic tool for creating fonts out of SVG icons. Um, really cool tool. And it creates one request opposed to multiple requests. So every time a request is made, there's a latency between the server and, and your computer. You don't want that to be there. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, eight. Like they're obviously using a lot of fonts. You may as well have one font icon. You know, there's stars are fonts, everything's a font. So you may as well make that icon set. Um, so that really reflects back onto their uh, performance, site performance. So we'll go into that soon. But in terms of their loading, it's actually quite slow. So click. It could definitely be better. It should just be snappy, very snappy. Their actual UI for products is nice. It's using Ajax loaders, which is cool. That didn't for some reason. And then you show high filters to give you a larger view is really nice as well. And that's pretty cool. The quick search, that's awesome. Got delivery options. Supply everything that you would need and expect. It's good. Let's go into one of their products. Okay, they got wish list. Great. Add to cart. Big large add to cart button. All the products, zoomable images at a high resolution, which is fantastic. All their images seem to have alt tags. If you don't use alt tags and images, something definitely you should look into and, and start implementing. That doesn't as it's the high resolution version. However, their standard, so that's the zoomed version. This version has their alt tag here, which is good. And features, description seems to be Unique descriptions. So what you typically want to do is search for their descriptions. So you need to make sure for product and e-commerce stores, you are writing unique descriptions because you don't want someone to search it and find every single other supplier that, or even your supplier's website that has listed that product because then they've got price comparison options and so forth. I really like this bar at the bottom that follows you down as you scroll. Uh, as soon as the call to action is taken off the screen, it then follows you, which is really good. And I'd say that that also applies for mobile, which is really helpful on mobile to have a call to action at the bottom at all times. So that's awesome. And you can add that to the cart. Now, when adding to a cart, we're taken to this. Scroll should be disabled at this point. Until this has disappeared, but that's fine. It's giving the upsells, which is awesome. So frequently purchased with and view cart. So the cart seems to be really nice. Now, I still haven't seen anything related to shipping or whether shipping is an added extra. It doesn't look like it. However, with shipping prices of $7 here in Australia, I doubt it's free. So whether they're not being transparent with the fact there is shipping or they don't actually have shipping and it is a local pickup only service. So looks like they do ship. So I'm interested to see what their shipping policy is because I haven't really seen it. Free shipping on all items over $99. Okay, that's cool. It's good that they show that. They've got their policies, and their state policies that's cool overall really nice design fantastic ui i don't know if i'd have too much to say about the ui it is very nice responsive everything that i'm clicking on seems to be displaying what i'd expect to see their sales are all on special i can't really fault the ui other than the the way it's programmed and coded the UI seems to be good. So when you go into their coding, uh, it looks like this. So I'm not sure if this is a CMS problem or the developers are just unique, but having 25,000 lines of HTML code 
is very unusual. So condensing this is the basics of optimization. So you know that they haven't done the basics and having inline CSS, random JavaScript throughout the page, it just seems like what they've added and every time they make adjustments, they just add it where it is. It is sort of a Frankenstein type website where they make an alteration and they just include it anywhere that they're working. Um, their whole meta data is all, all whack. That's something that they could really look into and make huge optimization improvements just off that. But there, you might have a script tag here and a script tag here. You may as well have one script because scripts are executed one at a time. If you were to remove these lines of code and combine these two scripts, they still act as two different uh, functions, but within the one script tag. So for every time you see script 169 times, you could effectively be combining these into you know, the one script. There's no reason whatsoever to have that many scripts other than poor programming. And combining these, like literally just removing that line there, could combine these two and execute them at the same time without delay. That's something that they really need to look into. Looking at their performance more in depth, that's horrific. Four and a half meg for a website with 533 requests is ludicrous over a hundred is ludicrous that's that's crazy this is testing in australia where their target demographic is fail to optimize images that's basics even their first contentful paint of 13 seconds if you've got contentful paint over two you're doing poor one second is a target we get ours between 400 and 600 milliseconds 13 nearly 14 seconds just to see visuals on a website is that's the worst i've ever seen to be completely honest um and this is their waterfall of how assets are being loaded and as you can see it's a lot of images that really should be deferred um or lazy loaded so if they're off the main screen they shouldn't be loaded so these should be loaded on page load these should not be loaded yet. These should load when I scroll and make an intent to view them. They shouldn't be downloaded onto the computer or downloaded at all until I'm ready. Um, so that's a huge concern. Their poorly coded website is costing them heavily in revenue. People will not shop when they're having to wait that long. That is a significant loss in potential revenue and something that's so easy to improve. It is very, very, very easy to improve load time below two seconds, which would increase their revenue by tenfold, easy. So that's something that's well worth considering, especially when their first byte time is, is you know, poor as well. And looking at Google's page speed insight reflects the exact same information. Their desktop and mobile are horrendously done the fur off screen images properly scaled and remove unused css so these are things that you know some of these couldn't even work properly these are things that should easily be fixed and make a huge impact on how the user engages with the site and how the user feels and trusts a website so yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing there with that. Um, it should definitely be something they should consider. And then obviously using uh, WebP as a next generation image loading service. Um, we use ImageKit, but you know, just having something, you know, 47% improvement by just implementing it. Uh, looking at their technologies, they're using everything that you'd expect. You know, they're using Cloudflare, which is very surprising considering they had such a first a bad first bite. Um, they obviously haven't optimized their Cloudflare or configured it correctly because they should be getting better performance than that. And optimization of HTML is a feature of Cloudflare. So you'd expect them to have optimized their HTML or CSS, you know, with these. And they're obviously not using the paid service because the paid service has image optimization as well. So that's interesting. They do have a few tools like the website optimizer, which is only a visual it's not a code obviously 
um, and a couple other features. Uh, Momentum, which is the time service, wonder, formatting time correctly using JavaScript. Font awesome for their icon fonts. Um, however, they've got a lot of fonts outside of that that they should really combine using a tool like Fontello. Looking at their sort of SEO efforts, it's not bad. Uh, it could definitely be a lot better. Um, having a look at their indexed sites or their index pages, their main categories, their breadcrumbs could definitely be capitalized, but their categories and their brands, like that's the CTR, I would not click on that. So I would not click on it. I would say other users would not click on it. So they'd have a low CTR for their brand pages. In terms of product, so their product pages, once again, could very much be optimized. I don't know why they have it so large. They could definitely have just BCF. It's a recognizable brand here in Australia. Um, that, that, that should definitely be fixed. And they're not really optimizing how much space that they could be taking up. So they're using breadcrumbs or Google's automated breadcrumbs, but they're not using breadcrumbs in a way you'd expect it to be used. So I'd say that they're not using, or not using it well, structured data. So yeah, uh, their titles, their descriptions, their category pages, they're all just very poorly done. I'd really like to see them make an effort on that. So they're using bread. They're using structured snippets for their product pages, but they're not using the proper breadcrumbs. They're not using their proper breadcrumbs. The titles, once again, aren't optimized. They should really be including more data in those. Looks like they're, you know, not taking advantage of all the features of, and they're not taking full advantage of the organization schema either. So poor effort on their on-page, their technical. SEO, so that on-page and technical SEO makes up for two-thirds of SEO other than their off-page, which their off-page seems to be pretty good. If you look at the Australian trend data, you can see that they've grown naturally and organically very healthily. However, the market has as well. So has the market grown quicker than their actual organic traffic? I don't know. Um, their first position and second position keywords seem to be up there with the best, they've got a lot of search volume, they've done a really great job of optimizing it. Having HTML in your URLs is you know, ugly and can easily be fixed as well. And their traffic trend, obviously, having grown, they've grown a healthy traffic trend. That seems like they're doing a really great job of adding new products to their store and maximizing the value of those pages and getting first position rankings. However, in terms of competition and outranking them, it's very easy. To outrank BCF on a lot of these keywords is just a matter of giving it some effort. You can see a lot of them are BCF related terms, and if you subtracted those and did a filter, I'm not sure if this will update the table or not, but you want to get keywords against them and bid against them you'd be finding it pretty easy to compete along most of these with a low competition score and first position being bcf with their on page seo you're not competing against much they do have a lot of referring domains so their domain rating is fairly high which is really good their backlink portfolio seems to be pretty good and a healthy growth of backlinks so prior to 2013 they've grown quite significantly and they've done a really good job of it so in terms of competition against bcf obviously they've got their retail chain that's something that's obviously there to stay however their online presence is poor you could outrank them if you're a competition of bcf it's something that you definitely have in your strategy plan to tackle so if BCF was smart, they'd definitely need to improve their 
on page and technical SEO. Their performance, once again, you know, request numbers too high, poorly written CSS, very poorly written CSS. The use of 7,000 important things. You should really be using less than 100 for an entire site. Um, complex selectors, these are things that cause massive delays in the rendering of a site. Uh, they're not using HTTP2. They're, not, they're barely using caching. Other than the UI, I don't have much, you know, good feedback for BCF. They don't have, they're not doing things correctly in terms of any other type of SEO or sort of online presence other than their UI, which is, is faultless, to be fair. Um, I'll wrap up this video here. Uh, th thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please like the video. Please subscribe. We're posting one of these a week. We're posting heaps of informative videos on SEO, web design, and things that are more advanced than what some of the other strategists or SEOs are doing, and things that we have compelling data for. We use data for everything. So we're definitely worth subscribing for to. Um, my name is Brody. I'm a digital marketing specialist here at Site Center. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll respond to each and every, every single comment. So I'll leave it here. Um, thanks for watching.